Good morning, Facebook. Good morning, everyone. This is Dr. Belissa Savedra Kynage, made for motion physical therapy. So uh, this morning uh, is Tuesday morning, so we want to discuss a little further about our Monday Did You Know post. So uh, Monday's question was, did you know that uh, diabetes can decrease your circulation? So, um, <clears throat> and that's why uh, today's title is, are you a ticking time bomb? Do you know why uh, you could be a ticking time bomb? Well, let's dive into a little bit about how uh, diabetes can affect your your circulation, which can in turn cause some major problems in your life if you don't address it uh, sooner than later. So um, I have my notes here just so, because um, there's a lot of information uh, to go over. So, so basically, let's start with um, what exactly um, does diabetes do? Uh, so diabetes causes a number of things. It causes peripheral vascular or per peripheral arterial disease, which um, affects the small vessels uh, that are further away in your body, in your hands and feet. Um, it causes plaque buildup um, or fatty deposits into your um, into your blood vessels. Um, it increases your risk for high blood pressure. It increases your risk for stroke. It also um, increases oxidative stress in your in your blood vessels. And I'll get a little more into that um, in, a, in a minute. Um, so again, all these things in turn um, lead to complications with your vision. It, it can um, a lot of times, uh, worst case scenario, cause blindness. It causes uh, kidney failure. And um, again, the, the main thing is it causes vascular problems. So we have our large vessels, which are those that lead to our hearts and our organs and our brain. Um, and then we have our small vessels, which supply our skin, our muscles, things like that. So again, when you have it's kind of like a, it's a real like domino effect. Um, if you think about it, um, one thing leads to another and then ultimately, um, you know, the, the ultimate thing is, is death from, um, from circulatory problems. Um, so for example, um, diabetes causes increased plaque buildup. Therefore you become uh, more at risk for developing a stroke because you now have these fatty deposits in your bloodstream or in your vessels that could break off into your bloodstream and cause either a blockage into your brain that causes a stroke. Um, it could cause a blockage into your heart and cause a heart attack. It could um, cause a blockage um, sometimes into your lungs and um, and and then you have pulmonary um, uh, pulmonary I forget what it's called, but it, it's uh, with your lungs, you, you have a, a clot. So therefore, you, your lungs aren't getting the oxygen or the blood supply it needs for the oxygen. And therefore, you can't breathe. Um, so that's um, that's how it affects the, the major uh, large vessels of your body. So now going into a little bit into the, um, the, the smaller vessels. So we're looking at um, you know, our skin, our skin is supplied with uh, a lot of tiny micro vessels um, to make sure that there's a lot of skin. So we ha need a lot of vessels, right? So we have all these little, um, we go from arteries to capillaries and, and, you know, just they get smaller and smaller. So what happens is um, the increased blood sugar in your body um, causes these blood vessels to be under a lot of stress, um, oxidative stress to be more exact. Um, so basically, um, our bodies are, can, I, I think of our bodies as this amazing machine that is constantly working together. Um, things are working together to make us, you know, live. And so um, things such as, you know, there's mechanical things, you know, whether you're moving, when you're moving your arm or even just moving my hands, I'm mechanically, things are working together to cause this motion. If something gets cut off somewhere down the line, I wouldn't be able to move my, my hands. Um, so, you know, things are working together mechanically, things are working together, um, systemically, you know, you, your kidneys help your, help to, um, 
filter out things um, that you digest. Um, and so therefore it, it filters things from your blood. It, it filters out all the junk that we, that's located in our blood. And so that kidney works with your bladder to help eliminate it out of your body through peeing. Um, so that's how it works. That's a, an example of a systemic way of things working together. Um, and then you have your, your, um, chemical, um, the chemical balance in your body that works together. So this is where the oxidative stress comes in. So basically, um, when you have um, high blood pressure um, and, and this oxidative stress causes inflammation in your blood vessels, so then what happens is that these um, radicals, oxidative or O2 free radicals are released into your body and they cause uh, blood vessel damage. Now, the thing that helps to um, to stop that is called nitric oxide, and that helps to relax your blood vessels. Now, um, in order for that to work, you need to have these things called enzymes, and they work to help you late, regulate this uh, this nitric oxide gas in your body. And so, um, what happens is um, as the as the the oxidative stress increases your um your nitric oxide get um let me let me rephrase that in order to decrease the inflammation you need to form uh what they call nitric oxide okay and then what makes nitric oxide is called nitric oxide synthesis and then this attaches to other things called fatty acids and in order for that to work it has to attach to certain fatty acids in your in your in your um, in your body, and so what happens is that um, when you are insulin resistant or you have decreased insulin, this fatty acid is not produced, and therefore your nitric oxide has nowhere to connect to, and therefore um, this inflammation stays longer or it gets worse and therefore um that's when your blood vessel damage occurs and so it's very it, it's a very complicated thing and i'll try to post a little visual for you visual guys out there because i'm a visual person so i'd like to see it all drawn out so i will post a visual um for everyone to see um in the comments uh later but um so just knowing that because um of the res insulin resistance in your body this causes your, your 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 chemical systems not to work properly and therefore the things that are made to help decrease the damage to your vessels are not being used because there's nowhere for them to be used and therefore you know you, you're more at risk for developing all these other complications of diabetes so um you know you want to make sure that um you know, when you're when you're trying to to fight diabetes, you want to make sure that you're working on, um, you know, how to reverse that insulin resistance. And we'll talk about that in a second. So um, one of the things um, I guess I want to bring up because one of the one of the main complications for my dad when he was uh, diabetic was having um, he had a, a stroke. Uh, hemorrhagic stroke, meaning that he was bleeding. So there's two types of strokes. There's the strokes that cut off your circulation. Um, and then there's the stroke that causes the bleed and therefore you can't control the bleed and in, in your brain. And, um, you know, the brain itself is protected by a special layer that keeps blood from actually touching the brain tissue. But when this, um, when a bleed occurs, it touches the brain tissue and actually damages it because the brain itself, the tissue in the brain, cannot um, cannot work or doesn't is is not compatible with blood. Um, even though it needs it, that's why it travels through these our vessels um, to help uh, supply the oxygen that it needs. But it, blood itself is not something that the brain needs so when there's a bleed in there it causes damage and that's when um the stroke happens and then the brain tissue dies and and then people are left with uh, result you know residual effects of it but in my dad's case the 
um, the blood vessels were, <clears throat> were damaging, were getting damaged and it, it to the point where his main uh, blood vessel to his brain stem, which is our, our basically our control system in our brain, um, was not, um, was having a bleed there. And so that part was getting attacked. And basically when your brain stem is attacked, then all, all your major functions start to shut down. And so, um, and in, in the end, that's what pretty much um, uh, uh, killed my dad because he had this stroke that was in the, deep in the brain stem. The doctors couldn't do anything to stop it. Um, and so, you know, we, we didn't have any choice. He didn't have any choice in, in the matter, but, you know, prior to that, my dad was having, um, you know, he was having issues where, um, his varicose veins were, were pretty much exploding. And, um, you know, these were veins that he's, he had for years, but, you know, they were always just there. And so, um, you know, they ended up, uh, just bleeding out and because the veins and, and, um, the arteries and, and the legs just couldn't hold all the pressure, you know. Um, yes, he also had high blood pressure, which we thought was being controlled with his medication. Um, but again, you know, yes, you can control things with medication, but it, it's still always there. So you have to keep in mind that, um, you know, the best way to control it is by, you know, retraining your body. So, you know, it, it goes back to, um, you know, retraining your body to control your blood sugar levels by reversing the insulin resistance and um, knowing, uh, you know, what exercises to do in order to be able to, um, you know, in order to re repair or <clears throat> retrain your body um, to use insulin. So... Um, insulin resistance occurs a lot of times because there's too, um, too many fatty acids that are blocking its way to, for the body to use it, um, and therefore pull that sugar out of the blood in order to give it to the muscles. And so, um, if you don't, uh, retrain your body to utilize those things, then your body's not going to produce insulin if you're not using them, right? So if you're not exercising, and um, you're not using those muscles, then your body's going to adapt. They're going to say, well, you're not using them, so why produce the insulin? Therefore, your body kind of slows that process down. And, um, you know, so therefore, it's just really hard for your for your body to, to start using or to get rid of that blood sugar that now you're bringing in through your dietary to, while you're eating and stuff. So you want to make sure that... You know, as you put things in your body, you're also um, trying to utilize it. So if you're, you know, food is our fuel. So we, as we fuel our body, we want to make sure we're using it. So we're not just putting things in our, our, um, in our mouths and our bodies and then not using it to help us um, produce energy for our muscles. Um, uh, good morning. Good morning, Michael. Um, how are you? Um so, so that's why it's important to incorporate the right type of exercises into your, into your program. Um, you know, there's, there's a whole variety of, of exercises out there. There's aerobic exercise, there's anaerobic exercise, and they're both just as equally important. So, um, you know, if losing weight is, is probably the, the main thing to help you decrease, um, the the fatty acids and uh the 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 fat content that's blocking your insulin from getting used um so that's that's probably your first um your first mission in helping you to fight diabetes uh then your next mission is to uh build up your lean muscle so that you can um utilize your insulin uh through through strength training or through um you know, lean muscle uses insulin more um, when you're exercising. So because it uses the glucose, um, you know, with that aerobic exercising, typically that uses more of your fat stores. So um, in this case, 
when you're diabetic, you have more blood sugar. So you want to make sure your body's using the uh, appropriate um, resources. And in this case, it's going to be the blood sugar in your blood and your bloodstream to help the muscles um, perform in your exercises. So it's uh, it's important to know um, that you're doing the right exercises in order to utilize your body and train it to to um, perform well. Uh, so so your first mission is, you know, um, to decrease your fat content. And then your second mission is to um, increase your lean muscle so that you can utilize and train it to use your insulin uh, better, to use your blood glucose better. Um, and then, and then of course, then your, your third mission is to incorporate lifestyle changes. So it's not so hard to, um, you know, maintain the, the progress that you make, you know, um, making sure you drink more water, uh, getting enough sleep, um, you know, things like that are all important in keeping your body healthy and making sure that you're using these things. So, um, and again, aerobic exercise helps with, um, you know, improving your vascular, um, or your blood flow and, and helps to decrease the, uh, fatty deposits. Um, so that's a, that's, you know, that's a, it all works hand in hand. So, um, and then that way, when you are, um, you know, as you decrease these things, then your insulin improves um, as far as getting used and um, and then using the blood glucose in your body. So, um, so again, you know, let's recap real quick here. Um, you know, diabetes is definitely uh, a, a silent killer. It just sneaks up on you. Um, you know, when you don't even realize it, what's going on in your body, you may not feel the effects right away, but then you'll start to see the symptoms. Um, decreased circulation can manifest itself in, um, as skin change, colors in your skin um, changes. A lot of people experience brown spots um, or, or browning of the skin, um, in the especially in the lower extremities or your legs um, and feet because... Um, as, like I said before, as the further you get away from your body, the smaller the vessels become and the, the easier it is for them to get damaged. So um, when those vessels are damaged, you have less circulation to those areas. And so um, your skin will be one of those areas where you notice it. Um, you know, decreased circulation uh, decreases the the nutrients needed for your nerves. And so people have um, the diabetic neuropathy, and we talked about that in another live. Um, but a lot of times that is uh, another another manifestation. Um, again, um, we've touched on blindness and, and decreased vision. Our eyes are supplied by blood supplies and nerve supplies. So when these things are damaged, our eyes are going to be affected as well. Um, systemically, uh, it'll affect your heart, um, as, as the increased plaque can affect your heart and then it'll affect your endurance. It'll affect, uh, you'll feel tired all the time. Um, so again, you know, it affects us in all aspects of our, of our body. And, um, you know, again, our blood is, a, is supplied throughout our entire body. So, um, you know, as we start to cut these things off with diabetes, then we start to have more and more complications. Um, so it's important that, you know, as soon as you're diagnosed, um, even if your diagnosis is pre-diabetic or even more so if you have a family history and you're not even diagnosed yet, then, you know, it's important to try to prevent it because prevention is, is probably the best medicine. You know, you want to make sure that you're, you're not even getting to that point where you have to, you know, work yourself back. Um, but, you know, so taking a diabetes risk assessment and, um, you know, seeing what are your risks? Are you even at risk? You know, and um, in general, keeping a, a healthy lifestyle, you know, staying active, eating, eating better, um, you know, keeping our kids away from processed foods and, you know, having a more healthy, um, homemade meals is, is probably, you know, the way to go here. Cause 
too many people are developing this disease and it's at a rapid rate and you know we have to teach our children better you know I'm trying to teach my kids early on that you know um, you know, mommy had it, dad, uh, her dad had it. And, you know, we want to prevent you guys from getting it. So we have to eat healthy and make healthy choices. So, um, so, you know, it all starts with prevention. So if you can prevent it, that's even better. If you have it and, and you've been recently diagnosed, then make sure that you address it as soon as possible. Um, so, and again, um, you know, one of the, one of the things that I, um, that I myself have experienced with my changes is that, you know, I have more energy. I, you know, don't have to always, um, you know, be super strict with everything, but, um, you know, I make sure that like, I know what I have to do and I know what I can do to help manage this. So, um, cause I don't want to have the same fate as my dad and I don't want to have to, you know, have to leave my kids at an early age. Um, because I didn't, you know, take care of myself. So, and sometimes, you know, you have to invest in yourself in order to be, um, to get better, in order to be a better you for your family and for yourself. Um, so it's just a matter of, of, you know, really educating yourself about what, what this disease can do to you and trying to prevent those things. So, um, again, you know, Stay active, keep moving, and um, we will catch you on the next live stream. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and we'll get to them, um, you know, as, as quickly as possible. And um, yeah, and if you felt that this information was um, informative, you know, just uh, comment below, you know, um, helpful. And, um, you know, that way I know that, you know, these, uh, live streams are helping you out and becoming more empowered by, um, increasing your knowledge on, uh, what diabetes is and how you can prevent it, manage it and reverse it. So, um, you guys have a great day and I will see you next week, next Tuesday for our next live stream. All right, guys, have a blessed day. Bye-bye.